Hey friends, I am officially back from my trip and back in my bedroom, new room unlocked in the apartment. And today, I know it's a little bit out of order, you still haven't seen my trip to Italy and Switzerland and France. That is all coming very soon, but first, we need to do something about my bedroom. And I say that as somebody who is getting ready to battle 100 degree temperatures this week in Denver, who has all of her stuff from the move just kind of haphazardly thrown about the room, and it's really not lending itself very well to getting good sleep, good rest, or to feeling like I'm at home in my own space. All of that said, before we get started, the first thing I'm gonna do is go unbox, I guess this is another purchase, an AC. Because this week it is going to be topping out over 100 degrees here in Denver, which when you're at 5,400 feet of elevation, feels hot. And I'm excited to show you guys how I'm actually powering this unit because during peak summer heat, peak daytime when I'm home and working and need to feel cooler, it's also peak energy consumption time and peak cost. So instead of plugging it into the wall like a lot of you might be thinking I'm going to do, I think I have an alternative idea, at least for today. This is nice. Well, that's really gonna make a big difference in my work day. It's also a little bit loud, so jury's still out on whether or not I'm gonna keep this unit or maybe return it for a different one. I wasn't able to find any decent models secondhand, unfortunately, where folks were able to get them to me before like next week, and then they weren't really giving that big of a discount. And from what I've read, unfortunately, AC units tend to go out when you use them a lot, and this summer has been hot. And so I can only imagine how often I'm actually gonna use this, and so having something with a warranty made sense to invest a little bit more and get something new with that coverage. But we'll see how it goes. But one thing I do know is that the Blue Eddy is gonna come in so handy for powering things like my air conditioner this summer, because we've already had multiple power outages where we were left without power in triple digit weather and it was smoking hot in here. The only way that we would have been able to cool down, I wish that I would have had the AC back then, is a unit like this plugged into the Blue Eddy. And while we're on the subject and before we get into the very fun DIY portion of today's video, I wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Blue Eddy. Now, when I first got off the road full time, I expected that my power consumption was going to go down. And I realize now in hindsight how silly that was because not only do I have all the electronics that I was using on the road, but I'm also adding things pretty regularly like an air conditioner, which I never had or really needed when I was on the road and could move better with the weather. But now that I'm sitting here with these glorious big windows that are single pane, unfortunately, and it's a hundred something degrees day after day here in Denver without a built-in AC, See, having an air conditioner this summer is going to get us through the hottest parts, I hope, and some of the exciting build plans that we have coming up. Now you all see me use this unit on the road full time. I've used it in bad weather, I've used it in snow, I've used it in rain. I've even been able to take a hose to it to wash it off. And in my opinion, as somebody who is both on and off the grid, depending on the day and the time of year, whether I'm in the Subaru camping or in the apartment here, having that functionality, being able to get it wet, dusty, dirty, full of sawdust when I'm building something or leaving it out in the rain overnight and not having to take up space in the Subaru has been a game changer. And now that I'm in an apartment, you might might think, well, why don't you just plug in an AC or all of your big electronics into the wall? And I could, I definitely could. But unfortunately, I'm usually using those objects during the middle of the day, during the heat of the day, when it's not only less efficient to be doing those things off of the standard wiring in a home, but we've also been subject to power outages in the heat of the day when they've cut our power and I've been left with nothing. We've had hailstorms, thunderstorms, lightning, and the monsoon season in Colorado is only getting started. 
and the Bloody has come in handy for all of these situations, as well as keeping my electric bill down on days like today when I would love to have some fresh AC but don't want to pay the bill for it. Now I know that my lifestyle is not necessarily conventional, spending two weeks on, two weeks off the road at this point, but whether you're on the road full time, you're living in an apartment like myself, dealing with blackouts, or just want a good source of backup power for large electronics especially, like an AC or a fridge, head to the link down in the description down below to check out the Bluetti AC240 and their other products to see which one might be right for you. All right, so I just took a minute to clear everything out, and by everything, I mean a dog bed, the mirror and the cords that were here, and the little pile that had accumulated in the corner. So what I think I'm gonna do first, now that it's clean and it's starting to finally cool off in here as well, which is so nice, is move the bed around in a couple of different positions. I've been debating doing this for a little while now and just haven't felt like it was quite the right time yet. My thought is actually just to push it a little closer to this wall, which is not great feng shui, which is why I didn't do it in the past. But I think ultimately this bed really only clears by so much which doesn't really leave a lot to do in the rest of the room. And even gaining back that foot or so on the other side, I think could just make the space feel a lot bigger and also hopefully prevent Tara from going down there because she day after day loves to go in the crack between the bed and the wall. And every single time she does it, it freaks me out. I don't know where she went and she has to like claw her way out. So we're gonna try to manage that and open up the space a little bit too. All right, yeah, I think I do like this. I might end up moving it back, but just to have all this space here, I could have a rug here. The door now has no concern. I mean, it's still not that much space, but it's more than we had. True to form, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see her. <laughs> Tara is under the bed. When I just moved it, she was under there and I didn't even know. Hi. Okay, it's still very basic in here, but now we have a rug and the mirror back in place and cleaned finally. And I feel like somehow this has already changed the space a little bit. I feel like there's just so much more room <laughs> as Tara sits in the doorway. And over here, I would love one day, hopefully soon, to build her more of like a little enclosure because I know that she really loves that. And hopefully that would prevent her even more from going under the bed. But until then, we're gonna do some other surface level easy upgrades that aren't gonna break the bank or take too much time, especially in this heat. All right, so I just went ahead and measured the height of my bed, which the top of my mattress sits at about 22 inches, maybe 21 and three quarters. So I think I'm gonna shoot for 21 overall height, and that's gonna include the legs and the additional butcher block actually that came from the kitchen. I'm gonna use that as the tabletop just to try to use what I already have and not be wasteful. All right, well, perfect timing because I'm done with the harder physical labor for today, all the sawing, right as the Blue Betty and the AC died. Now, obviously I could plug the AC back into the wall, but I think it did what I was attempting to do with it. It's remarkably cooler in here right now and the Blue Betty held strong throughout. I know it probably seems like, oh, the Blue Betty died, but there's only so much power. There's nothing wrong with the Blue Betty. It was only gonna run as long as it was gonna run based on the size of station that I have. This is the AC240, so obviously if you're looking to do something like run an AC around the clock and you're just using solar, for example, I'd probably go with a slightly larger unit. But it worked for our purposes today, got us through the heat of the day and the hardest, like most uh, intensive labor that I'll be doing, which still is not too much, but with it being almost 100 degrees outside, I'm definitely stoked with how far it got us and I can't wait to charge it back up next time we're off grid so that way I can continue to use it, not only for fun things like this, making it a little bit cooler when I don't wanna be sweating my butt off, but also for backup emergency power this summer as temperatures continue to rise. 
All of that said, thank you again to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are looking for your next off-grid, outdoor, or backup power solution, make sure to head down to the link in the description down below to check out the Blue Eddy AC240 and even larger units that they also have to see what's gonna fit your needs. All right, now that those pieces are cut, let's go to the bedroom and get to assembling. It might be simple, but it is definitely a start. My cups, my phone, my light, my books can now sit next to me and not on the floor gathering dog hair and God knows what else that swirls around here in the middle of summer. Tomorrow we have a couple more small projects that involve books, some fun curtains, and finishing up this little corner. And then I think we're gonna be done. All right, it's the next day, and after a full 24 hours of my new nightstand, I can say that it's a nightstand. It definitely was nice. I enjoyed having it last night. It's not life-changing, but it is really cool to not have to put all my stuff on the floor and dust it off from dog care every morning from this little one. But that said, we do have a couple more projects that I wanted to get done today. It's a little bit later in the afternoon, so not quite as hot, thankfully, before calling this room a wrap. As you'll see, it's very minimal. It's very minimalist, if you will, because I don't want to be adding a ton of stuff to my life or to my room. I just want to make it feel a little bit more lived in, a little bit more homey. So without further ado, let's wrap up these projects and do a final tour. Well, it is officially day three. I did finish yesterday, but I just wanted to wait until midday today when I had a little bit better lighting to do the space justice. And although it's very minimal, there's not a ton of stuff in here. It's definitely no one's Pinterest dream room. I'm really happy with how it came out. I feel like small little touches of personality, my bookshelf, the plant that I moved actually from the living room in here, all just make it feel a little bit more homey and a little bit more like me, which ultimately was what I was going for. I think it's really fun also to carry a space over time and so I'm sure the longer I'm here in Denver or I travel elsewhere and still have the apartment I will continue to bring in small things that make the space feel even more like me But for now, I think this is a great starting point I want to say thank you again to Blue Eddie for sponsoring today's video and keeping us cool on day one I want to thank you all for being here and following along whether we're out on the road or back in our apartment And on that note know that I just got my Subaru back today, which means more more car camping videos are coming very soon. All of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this little DIY mini makeover in my room and I'll see you all in the next one.